What's up guys, Vulcan here. So since we've been in this quarantine, I've been revisiting some of the action RPGs that I covered on my channel at one point or another, and one of those was Warhammer Chaos Bane. This game had some strong promise before launch, and it was one that a lot of people were excited for. I remember I was excited for it because it was exploring the old world in Warhammer rather than 40K or some of those more overused locations that we see all over the place, almost every Warhammer game touches on. And I wanted to give everyone an update on Chaos Bane. They've added quite a bit of DLC, they've added quite a bit of content, patches, things like that over the past year. This game ended up in so many different Steam libraries that I felt like this was a good one to touch base on and see what they've done. First off, they added Tomb Kings back in December 2019. It landed with mixed reviews. The DLC sent players to the sands of Nahakara to take down the Tomb Kings makes sense. It also added new enemies, new locations, a new story arc. It added the sixth act to the game. This gave about three hours worth of story content. It added some new passive skills, and it gave a new boss fight to fight in boss rush as well as story. My review for Tomb Kings is in the upper right hand corner now, so I'm not going to recap it here. If you want, you can go to that, go to the end. There's like a TLDR. Now the most recent update was Forges of Nuln, and this added the final class to the game, which was the dwarven engineer named Kila. And the Forges of Nuln added a new story arc as well. This was the seventh act for the game, featured the same about three hours of story content, also added new enemies, new locations, new bosses. If you're leveling a brand new character and you want to jump directly into Forges of Nuln, the story is going to take you from level 1 to level 20. That's what I did with Kila, and it worked out pretty well. It also added Chaos 9 and 10 difficulty modes. So if you're someone who's been kind of cranking those up over time, you can go back and there's two more to conquer. They updated Alessa's voiceover, which is great because she sounded terrible in the launch title. They added a new stat called Drain Life. As you deal damage, you heal. And they added some other quality of life updates, balance passes. This helped even out the classes a little bit. So so everything should be a little bit more even. I know I heard two things. One, Alessa was way overpowered, and two, Conrad was way underpowered. This patch seemed to help a little bit with that, so that's something you guys can look forward to if you guys main either one of those classes. So let's start with the new class, Keela the Engineer. She specializes in fire and physical damage. She offers some off-tank style play, lots of taunts, things like that. And her archetype ability is pretty unique. It's very different than the rest. You know, the archetype ability is that special innate ability that each class has. For instance, Alyssa the Ranger, she can dodge roll through things. You have the Mage, and he can control his magic, so he can move his magic around. Well, Keela has this gadget on her back that will build up heat as you use some of her abilities. And the more heat you have, the lower your cooldowns are. But at 100 heat, Kila will actually overheat, explode, deal AoE damage, set your heat back to zero, and you'll lose the cooldown reduction. Now you can manually reduce heat by clicking the space bar and you'll vent steam and you can damage enemies in a cone wherever you're facing your mouse. So you can click to run away from enemies and shoot your steam behind you if you would like. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but it does some damage. And the whole point of Keela's archetype is to manage her heat gauge to maximize your damage output. Now I personally found her archetype ability a little too micromanagey. I was spending so much time keeping an eye on it that I was playing the user interface and I wasn't playing the actual game. So honestly, I just ended up ignoring it and I just let it explode, let it refill whenever it needed to. It kind of just did its own thing and it worked out pretty well. I didn't feel like I had overly long cooldowns. I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. When she explodes, you don't take any damage. So there's literally no risk to letting her explode and just resetting other than the fact that you lose your cooldown reduction, which isn't honestly a big hit. So starting out, I did find her pretty squishy and weak, and I start off each character on hard difficulty and adjust from there, but with Keela, I almost had to immediately drop the difficulty to normal, so it didn't take forever to kill things. It wasn't necessarily that I was taking so much damage, it was just she was so weak, I wasn't able to just wipe through things. I wasn't able to finish elites relatively quickly, I wasn't able to finish normal enemies relatively quickly, and I felt like each level was taking forever. So on normal, it went a little bit faster, but not much. Level 20 for Keela is very much night and day. Before 20, her gameplay was pretty clunky. I didn't really have any synergy. My hotbar was a mess. There was just a hodgepodge of skills on there. That way I could dish out as much damage as I could to try to churn through the story. But once she hit level 20 
and you start accumulating some gear. You get a decent chunk of God Tree points. She starts synergizing pretty well. She starts clicking on all cylinders, and it actually felt good to play. She has some great strengths that I found myself gravitating towards, and it was just interesting how night and day it was. I felt like she had an identity crisis between ranged combat and melee combat early on, because her starting combo ability, which is a melee skill called Iron Strike, was extremely weak. It's where she hits with her hammer, and then she shoots her pistol in kind of a combo type deal. And it felt weak and still does feel weak all the way up until the point where I'm at. And it's completely overshadowed by her second basic attack, which is a slug projectile, which deals much higher damage, pierces enemies, and you can just ratchet it off back to back to back. And that completely invalidated the melee side of Kila. But unfortunately, some of her other melee abilities were stronger than some of the ranged abilities. It just never really felt like you could gravitate towards one side or the other. Typically on characters like this, if they offer, here's one side of ranged combat, here's one side of melee combat, you can start to kind of put the melee skills together, the melee passives together, and end up making the melee version of this character, or the ranged version of this character. But what I had was this weird patchwork put together range slash melee, where I'm trying to close the gap, but at the same time I need to, you know, kind of repel and push enemies back, so that way I can maximize my range damage. It was just kind of a weird system. But like I said, at level 20, Things started to synergize a little bit better, and they started to mold, and really, it all came down to Kila's god trees. And these things are fairly balanced, but there's one skill in particular that was a complete game changer, and that is Mogram's Might, which is a toggled buff that increases all of your damage done by 30%, but also it'll automatically force fire damage to apply a burn, physical damage to bleed, etc. But you take 20% more damage. And like I said, this is a toggle, so you can just turn it on and leave it on and just go wild because you can completely mitigate that 20% more damage that you're taking through other passives that Kila has access to. Once I was able to unlock this thing at level six, it helped congeal some of her skills into a theme that I could actually build around. I could start to mix some physical and fire damage to maximize my bleeds and maximize my burn damage on enemies. Plus she got a nice little boost to all of her baseline damage, which helped clear through content. And at this point, I switched from normal chaos one. And honestly, I think this Mogram's might buff is going to be what people will need to build around to create a strong starter for Kila until you can start to put together some sets and then start experimenting with some of her other abilities. She does have a good ability set, but it does take a while to kind of build up and get there. So the Forges of Nuln story adds another three hours of story content to the game that follows relatively the same patterns as the previous DLC in the base story for Chaos Bane. You're going to see the same environments, but this DLC kind of bucks that trend a little bit because you can start to see a variety of areas to travel through and it's not the same tile set over and over and over and over again. Um, this one mixes them up a little bit better, but unfortunately most of the enemies are the same Nurgle enemies you see in Act 1 of the base game. So you've seen them, you've encountered them, and it's just recycled. But they did add in three new elite enemies, a Minotaur, Chamangor, and Nurgle's Champion. And Nurgle's Champion is this like big knight and he has this shield and he has some pretty nasty acid passives he leaves a trail behind him he'll smash the ground to send a shockwave he's pretty beefy so whenever i encountered one of those champions it took all of my attention away from everything else and i needed to take him down as quickly as possible before acid filled up the entire area that i was fighting in now the story here revolves around stopping a madman from destroying the foundry that ends with a final boss fight against said madman. Now the boss fight itself is fairly interesting because you're really kind of completing more of a horde mode rather than a boss fight. And I wasn't a huge fan of the design. I liked the horde mode. It was different, it was interesting compared to the rest of the game, but you kind of kind of survive and then complete these objectives along the way. And what I was expecting is a phase two where after I completed the objectives, I actually had to fight the boss. Instead, I completed the six objectives, and then he died, and that was it. It wasn't a tough boss fight, it was more just pay attention to your surroundings, watch out for projectiles, watch out for AoE, and that's, that's it. There wasn't really any other mechanics beyond that, other than don't get overwhelmed and don't die. So Chaos Bane is in a better shape now than it was a year ago. I will admit that, hands down but I don't believe it's enough to warrant that $50 price tag right now. The game just fails to deliver on any sustainable content after you've completed the baseline story in those two paper-thin DLCs. 
I really like that they continue to work on the game. I like that they're promising new end game content. They announced today a Towers of Chaos that's coming soon. They're also working on revamping Relic Hunt to add more depth and make it more unique because right now Relic Hunt is basically expeditions with a chest at the end of it. And it's not really different. It's the same mode. It's just a, a chest is at the end. So I'm glad they're actually taking that into account, going back and trying to make it a little bit different. But ultimately, I would say right now, guys, if you're looking at Chaos Bane, either wait for a deep sale on this one or hang tight until they add more in-game content that can be played repetitiously. Because right now, I just don't see a lot of longevity with this one. And I think your money could be spent better elsewhere. So let me hear what you guys think. Have you guys tried this new DLC? If so, what'd you guys think? If you haven't tried it, does this even look enticing to you? I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say. And then also, is Keela someone that's big in lore or is this someone that got added into the game? I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Let's get a conversation rolling downstairs. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. This has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you guys next time.